We continue using the tool developed by Mutas, the that Java program that allows us to troubleshoot the, the rules. If you haven't seen part six, part seven, sorry, uh, I strongly recommend you to see it, uh, to watch that video, because otherwise you're going to be a little bit lost in here on this part eight. So we, and also want to remind once again that you should do this in a test environment where you develop your rule, you should not add Java programs into your production uh, curator. Uh, you may get in uh, some issues with support if you uh, do that. Uh, now, we have this uh, particular event. Let's actually uh, display it. In what? We have a, a custom property called actual user. Uh, in here is uh, Jose here, and the offense that we are trying to uh, to get to fire, which is uh, not firing, is actually this one. It's the same event as we use uh, in the previous uh, use case in part seven. So here's a rule, very simple in this case, uh, only two conditions. It's the same event on the, the train micro on that QID, and the actual user custom is any of Jose. Hmm. Why is not firing? Again, you, you can try all the things, but we have our great tool here. So let's actually run the tool and see what the tool has to say. Great. We see that the first condition is met. Okay, but it's actually the actual user custom menu. Well, <laughs> and this is one of the things that sometimes may bite you. It's a like case sensitivity, as you can see here. So we are uh, looking, let's go back to the actual uh, event. And well, you probably remember that the event actually is uh, uppercase J. So we can actually go ahead and fix that rule now quickly without having to replay the logs. And the beauty of this methodology is also is faster than replaying the logs, but also uh, the, the, there will not be any action. If you are sending email as part of your rule, or any, none of those things uh, will happen when you are evaluating just the test conditions of your rule. So we're going to go here and do actual user equals of uppercase Jose added here. And uh, we added this one and we remove the one with the lowercase. And we submit that. And we finish our rule. We can quickly go back to the troubleshooter, the, the rule debugger, and launch it and see what it has to say now. Good. So it's saying that we fixed that. Both conditions are, are, are real. And now if we replay the log, actually, let me go back to the offenses, make sure that there's no offense, uh, because we erased the previous one and disabled the, the rule that fired on the same event that we did on part seven, not to confuse things here. Let's go back to the logs and let uh, replay the actual event as before. And here we have it, and bingo, <laughs> we have our rule firing in here as we can actually uh, see. And if we go back to the offenses, we'll see that we have an offense firing on that condition. Actually, we don't even have to look at the offense. Just the fact that we have the custom role engine in here just tells us that that, uh, that we got that access. Let's see another case in which actually we have a rule firing with a false positive and we want to use this nice tool to actually determine what is wrong and to have it fixed. So we're going to replay another log in here. That is actually this built TCP AP connection, but we had a rule that is actually triggered in here. Hmm, let's take a look at it. And it's an important one, an unauthorized attempt access. Well, what, what is all this about? Let's click on the actual event that, you know, remote, this is a dangerous condition. So we have a rule actually firing in here. Let's actually see what the rule debugger is going to tell us. And we can actually even go here from the actual uh, rule from the log event and see the rule that actually fire. And this rule says, well, uh, when we have a built TCP IP connection, that's good. When it's remote to local, 
and the destination IP is this one so why let's actually take a look at the uh, event that trigger this offense and we can understand why 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 this is actually firing where it's not supposed to because this event is going from uh, we can actually see it uh, right there that the the source IP is internal one and the destination IP is also internal so again we can actually go with a rule and when we launch our rule debugger program notice that in here I'm selecting line 2 because in the logs we have two conditions and this is the one that we are interested in uh, so when we uh, trigger that it confirms what we suspect that is uh, seeing this actually like uh, an in inbound type of traffic remote to local but that's a that's an internal rule that's another thing that normally can hit you when you are uh, writing your rules that you need to make sure that on your network hierarchy you have defined what your local uh, elements are and in here on the critical servers if we go here we see that we don't have that IP address we don't have 11.4.1.90 so let's actually go ahead and fix that so if we add that save it and we need to deploy the changes let me actually go back to the admin tool and it's going to tell us that we need to uh, deploy the changes so, so let me deploy the changes I'm going to pause the video and be back when the deploy finishes so the deployment finished let me actually close this uh, previous offense that is a, a false positive and see if the change in the networking fixes the problem but again I can use my nice tool that uh, Mutash developed and test it now now that the deployed the change has been deployed and we should see that the condition on remote to local should be false now and sure is we see that uh, it's, that condition is actually false now so if we were to replay the actual event the event that uh, was giving us a false positive before we'll see that the actual event comes in actually I, let me put it here yeah we have the event right here but the offense does not fire 